Factory method allows you to simply handle complex object creation and make your game slot more flexible. There will be no more coupling between your classes, so you will be able to switch them as you want. The creation logic will be in one place, which will make your code more reliable and easy to modify. We'll work on a simple example of spawning some enemies and all of the enemies will be modular, so we'll be able to set them different weapons and armors. All of this will be made using scriptable objects, so right now I have just some archer and some knight, where we can set the prefab and the weapon and the armor of all of the enemies. So the way all of the code is handled right now is that most of it is inside of the enemy spawner, which is just some mono behavior script. So we have the button to spawn the enemies, then we have the enemy we want to spawn, just some positions, as for the area where we want to spawn the enemy, as we are spawning the enemy, I'm just instantiating it from the prefab, and then here is the ugly part, which we'll change using the factory, because right now we are deciding based on the enemy type, which is stored in the enemy scriptable object, how we want to initialize the enemy, because each of the enemies could have different spawn logic. So you can see that when we are spawning the archer, we need to create a bow, we need to set the bow damage, we need to create some leather armor, we need to set its protection, and only after that we can initialize the archer. The same way for the knight, we are spawning some sword, setting the damage, spawning some plate armor, and then initializing the knight. You can imagine that as you'd be adding more enemies and more weapons and armors, this class would really grow big and it would be really annoying to modify it, because for each enemy we would need to add new case, we would need to modify the weapons, and the way that I've set it up right now is really not flexible at all, because the knight is tied to the sword and the plate armor. So if you would want to, I don't know, give bow to the knight, we would have to change the code in here. And the same way for the archer, if the archer should have some different armor, we would have to change the code in here, which really is not effective at all. So this is what we will try to fix using the factory pattern. After that, we are just setting the spawn position and setting the position of the new enemy to the spawn position. Then I have classes for each of the enemies. So I have one class for the knight, which has some of the initialization logic. It is setting these sprites based on the weapon and the armor we select. It has some functions to attack, to receive the damage. The same way for the archer, these are really simple classes. Then I have classes for each of the armors and the weapons. These are just holding some of the protection, the same way for the leather armor. Then we have the sword and the bow, these just have some damage. Then I have scriptable objects, which right now is just holding the sprite for the enemies is dissimilar, it is holding the weapon, the armor they should have, the enemy type, some prefab for the weapon, again just holding the sprite, then I have just one enum for the enemy type, based of which then we are deciding how we should initialize each of the enemies in the enemy spawner. And as with each of the design patterns, we need to take a look at the diagram, which this time is made out of five elements. First one is the creator, which is either an interface or an abstract class, which defines what all of the concrete creators, which are the factories, inheriting from it will have in common. Then we have the concrete creator, which will be a concrete implementation of the creator. So for example, the creator can be an interface iWeapon factory, and the concrete creator can be medieval weapon factory, futuristic weapon factory, and all of these other implementations of the weapon factory. So the concrete creator is actually the factory, which will be then creating some products. Now product is an interface or an abstract class, which will define the products of the creator. This could be for example I weapon, or I armor, or I enemy. Then we have the concrete product, which is again concrete implementation of the product, which could be for example a sword, bow in case of the weapons, or it could be the leather armor, the plate armor in case of the armors. And the fifth part, which is the client, which will be interacting with the creators or the factories. In our case, this could be the enemy spawner. First, let's start with the enemy factory. So I will create new script, which will be just holding all of the interfaces, because we'll have quite a lot of them. So this is interface for the creator, the I enemy factory. Later, we'll also specify the return type, so the product. The product will be just some I enemy. So let's create interface for it as well. So this is the product interface. Now the I enemy factory will return as the product, so the I enemy. I just have a simple function for it, where we will provide it with the scriptable object and the level of the enemy that we want to receive. And I want each of the enemies to have some initialized function, where we will just pass in the enemy scriptable object, 
each of the enemies should also be able to attack and receive some damage. Now we have the creator and the product out of the way, so let's get to the concrete creator, which will be the concrete enemy factory. This one will inherit from the creator interface, so this is the eye enemy factory. In my case, I'm not going to be making the enemy factory a mono behavior, so I cannot use those two functions. And instead, we will just implement the interface, so that's the get enemy function. So this function will return some enemy, so let's now create the concrete product which in my case can be the knight and the archer, so both of these will be inheriting from the eye enemy. So we now have those two concrete products as well. Let's now implement the interfaces, so that will be just the initialize function. Now the initialize function is not going to work great, because the initialize function is taking right now just the enemy script table object. For the archer, I would want it to take the bow and the leather armor, but for the knight I want it to take the sword and the plate armor, so this is something we will fix later by introducing more interfaces. For now I will just make the sword and the plate armor public and I will exclude it from the initialize function so then we will just set it kind of manually without using the initialize function but don't worry later we will provide interfaces for these as well. So right now both of these initialize function look like this they are just taking in the enemy square table object and saving it so now it's correctly implementing the interface. So now we are done with the product, which is just the eye enemy interface. We are done with the concrete product, which is the knight and the archer. We are done with the creator, which is the eye enemy factory. And we are done with the concrete creator, which is the enemy factory. And we are pretty much also done with the client, which is the enemy spawner. So now we need to move all of the creation logic inside of the enemy factory, which right now is inside of the enemy spawner. So I will just move all of this logic that's inside of the switch statement into the factory. The code inside of the enemy factory is still ugly, but don't worry, we will fix it later. Now what we have achieved is that this function will just give us some eye enemy. So in the enemy spawner, when we call that function in the enemy factory, we will just get some eye enemy. So we are not tied to any specific implementation of let's say the knight or the archer. We will just get some eye enemy. To sum it up, what's happening right now in the get enemy is that first again we are just instantiating the enemy, then I'm storing the eye enemy because this is what we'll be returning at the end. I have the switch as before. If it is the archer, still I'm getting the archer, creating the bow, creating the leather armor. An additional thing I needed to do is that I needed to set the bow and the leather armor outside of the initialize function. Then I'm just returning the archer as the eye enemy. And in the night case, it's really the same. I have just added the enemy factory inside of the enemy spawn, so we can actually get the enemies using it. So I'm storing the reference to the enemy factory. On start, I'm just creating the instance. And then when we want to spawn the enemy, I'm just getting it from the enemy factory. And then what I need to do is that I need to check if the eye enemy is the mono behavior, because it may not be. And the reason we need to know if it is a mono behavior is that just so that we can check for its position and then set it to the spawn position. So now we can see that the enemy spawn class is quite a bit shorter and it doesn't really know which enemy is going to spawn, it just cares if it receives some enemy, which is the main idea of the factory method. So if you try playing the game, I can try to spawn some knights, yep this works, and I can try to switch it up for the archer, yep this works as well. You can see that right now the archer is holding a sword, which doesn't look the best, but this is just how I configured it. So in the archer I said that the weapon should be sword. So right now it looks like the system is flexible, that we can assign any weapon to any enemy, but this is not actually the case, because the yeah, it is setting the sprite to the sword sprite, but still the archer has attached the script of the bow. Because this is still the part that is kind of hard coded in the code, that the archer always has a bow and leather armor, but again this is what we will change by creating more factories. So now the enemy spawner doesn't care which enemy it receives, and we will do something similar with the individual enemies, is that each of the enemies is not going to care which weapon or which armor it receives, it will just care that it receives some eye weapon and some eye armor, so creating those two factories will be really the same. We need to define the product and the creator interfaces. For the product interfaces, we have the eye weapon and the eye armor. I've also changed the eye enemy interface, because right now when we are initializing it, 
the enemy is no longer tied to a specific weapon or specific armor as it was before. Because before, only the knight could be storing just the sword and just the plate armor. But what we'll do using these interfaces is that each of the enemies will be storing just some eye weapon and some eye armor. And for the greater interfaces, we have just the eye weapon factory and the eye armor factory, which are really the same as the eye enemy factory. And now, here comes the beauty of the factory pattern, because right now the knight or the archer are not going to be tied to specific weapon or specific armor, which means that we can pretty much combine those two scripts into one enemy script. Now even the enemy script became quite a lot simpler, because right now we have just one enemy script, so when creating different enemies, we don't have to be copy and pasting this code, but still if you want you can create different eye enemy products, such as some ranged enemy, melee enemy and so on, but right now this enemy class is just holding some weapon and some armor, which then we can initialize in this function, so the code for all of the enemies will be really the same. Now as we have introduced those two new interfaces, the eye weapon and the eye armor, we obviously need all of the armors to extend from the eye armor and the same way the weapons. When extending these armors from the interface I didn't really need to change much because they are already implementing the function that it needs and those two variables I just need to provide them with the getters and the setters. So the same way for the leather armor and for the shirt it is the same. And for the bow again, I just need to add the setters and the getters. Now the last thing that we are missing is to create those two factories, the weapon and the armor factory, which then in the enemy factory will just provide the enemy with some weapon and some armor. I implemented the function that both of them needs, so the armor factory will just need to give us some armor, the same way the weapon factory, and the way that they are going to decide which weapon or which armor we need again through the enemy scriptable object. So in the enemy scriptable object I'm storing a reference for the weapon SO and the armor SO and in each of these scriptable objects again I will be storing some type of the weapon and type of the armor we want to receive. So I will go into the enums class and just add those two enums. And from now on we don't really need to know about the enemy type because right now we have just one enemy class which can store any weapon and any armor. So we don't really care if it is archer or knight, we just care which weapons we want to give it. So I will just remove that enum. In the armor scriptable object, I'm also going to store the type of the armor that we want to use, in the same way for the weapon. Inside of the armor factory, I have created a simple switch statement, so we are deciding based on the armor type, which one of these classes we want to instantiate. With the weapon factory, it's really the same, so we are deciding which weapon type we have selected, if it is the third, we are creating the sword class, if it is the bow, the bow class, and so on. Now the enemy factory has become quite a bit simpler as well, so inside of it we need to store a reference to some weapon factory and some armor factory. I'm just setting both of these in the constructor. And then when we want to get the enemy, again we are creating instance of the enemy game object. And then there is really not much going on, we are just checking if the new enemy has some enemy script. If it has, then we are just getting some weapon from the weapon factory, we are getting some armor from the armor factory, and we are just initializing the enemy with the weapon and the armor that we got from those factories. Now as we have added this constructor in the enemy factory, in the enemy spawner when we are creating the enemy factory, we just need to provide it with the weapon factory, so I will just provide it with the only weapon factory we have, so that's the weapon factory. But then you could create different types of enemy factories, different types of weapon and armor factories as well. So now you can see that the code is a lot cleaner, a lot more flexible and a lot more modifiable. So when we want to add new enemies, we don't really need to change anything because the I enemy class already exists and all of the enemies will have pretty much the same class. So adding new enemies should be simple, if you want to add new weapons, we just need to create the weapon class itself, so define the logic of the weapon, then we will just need to add the weapon type, and inside of the weapon factory, just create instance of that class, that's it. And for the armors, it is the same way. Into the enemy class, I've just added a simple debug, which will tell us with which weapon and armor the enemy was spawned. So right now I'm trying to spawn a knight with a sword and plate armor, so yeah, it spawned the enemy with sword and plate armor. So now if I change it, let's say for leather armor, 
and for the bow, which doesn't make much of a sense, but let's see. Spawn, yep, we can see it change the visuals. And in the console, it spawned it with a bow and leather armor. You can see that the factory method is really effective way to handle initialization and creation of some complex objects. It will greatly help you to decouple the code of the products and the creators, so now the enemy spawner doesn't know which enemy it's going to spawn, the same way the enemy factory doesn't really know which weapon or armor it's going to get, this is just up to the individual factories. So using the factory method pattern, you can make your code really flexible, modular, and all of the code is centralized pretty much in one script, so if you want to change how the enemies are created or how the weapons and the armor is created, you can just jump into the individual scripts and change it there. If you are looking to learn more about the MVC and the command design pattern, then you can check my Patreon where I have released a 40 minute guide where I will teach you about the MVC and the command design pattern in depth. We will focus on a simple example on a to-do list, so feel free to watch it. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!